Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the video here. We have a deck that is pretty spicy. It is considered a road deck in my opinion, and I am calling it Jurassic Park. Why? Because we have dinosaurs. Did you say T-Rex? Yeah, we have a T-Rex here. So first, let's start with Oranguru. It's important to note that we do play two copies here of Oranguru. The reason we play two copies is because we have a lower draw supporter count. We've only got four. Well, we've got the four Cynthia. We've only got one Lily. And then we've got one Tate and Liza. So we are going to rely on the Instruct ability. And since we've got two, we can potentially Instruct twice. We've got two Baby Buzzwool. Just because we're playing a fighting deck with Diancy Prism Star, it's good to get the value out of him. Opening up with him with... Uh, the Sledgehammer attack, with Choice Band, Diancy. You start doing some decent amount of damage if they happen to be playing at EX or GX Pokemon. And then we go into the two main attackers of the deck. So there's two fold, there's two different ways to sort of uh, approach the matchup depending on what you're playing. So with Rampardos, which is, is a stage two evolving from the Fossils. Uh, Fossil is 60 HP. It, is considered basic Pokemon. If your opponent does knock it out, they do get a prize. The card can't retreat, but you can just randomly discard it and you could actually get it back with the Fossil Excavation Map. So we'll go over that in a second, but Rampardos, 150 HP, Stage 2, Clean Hit, does 60 damage. Now, if they are an Evolution Pokemon, it will do 60 more damage. And for three energy, the Wild Crash, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, it will be knocked out. So it doesn't matter how much HP it has, if it's a basic Pokemon, that means Wailord GX, that means you, you just get knocked out. And then we have one copy of Kranidos, just in case we're not hitting our rear candy, we do have this as a backup. And then the other main attacker here is Tyrantrum. So HP 160, stage two, ability Tyrannical Heart, as long as you do not have more Pokemon in play than your opponent, his attack will do 60 more damage, and he takes 30 less damage from attack. So technically, he could potentially have 190 HP and be doing 160 damage before we start adding damage modifiers such as Diancy Prism and a Choice Band. We have one copy of Energy Recycle System. I found that this was very valuable for being able to get uh, sort of like a pseudo super rod in a sense, and if you are missing energy for turn to attach this could potentially help you out and get one out of the discard for you we have two copies of fossil ex excavation map so what we're able to do with this is either put an unidentified fossil from our discard pile into our hand or we'll be able to search our deck for an un unidentified fossil card reveal it put it into our hand we have three copies of order pad. What I use the order pad for in here is to be able to look for either fossil, if we've already got a rare candy in our hand, or it's to grab like an ultra ball. It's basically just pull all the pieces together. So it's a stage two deck. We're gonna be running four copies of rare candy. We have one pal pad just to get some of those draw supporters back because we do play such a limited, uh, limited amount of them. So that sort of helps us out there. I found that Rusty Stretcher gave me some value in case I happen to open up with my Buzzwool. I've got another one prized. It does help me get him back when I'm on the Sledgehammer turns. And it also helps me get back some of these pieces that which are a little bit difficult to get all together. So then we got four copies of Ultra Ball. We have four copies of un Unidentified Fossil. So they do take a prize card when they knock this out. So it's something to take into consideration, but you can do almost a Guzma switch play. You'll see, I think it's in one of the videos. So if it happens to be on your bench and you wanna get your active out of this spot, you can Guzma up the unidentified fossil. You can discard it because you may discard it from play at any time. And then you can bring up one of your bench Pokemon. That way you can just grab fossil excavation map and boom, get it right back out of the discard. So that's a pretty sneaky play there. Uh, Shrine of Punishment is obviously because we're playing single prize attackers. This will help us just uh, finalize on getting knockouts by getting some chip damage every turn. Four copies of Cynthia. We've got four copies, uh, excuse me, three copies of Guzma. One copy of Judge. I found this very helpful in swinging a lot of matchups. We've got the one copy of Lily. One copy of Tate and Liza, this can help us out as a switch card or as a draw supporter, depending on what we need. Two copies of Choice Band, I was playing three, I cut it down to squeeze in the Rescue Stretcher. 
We got two copies of Wishful Baton. This is very, 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 very valuable card in this deck because if we lose something without having energy acceleration in this deck, if we lose something that's got three energy on it without a Wishful Baton, it does hurt. It does really, really hurt, especially when you're putting it onto something that's only like, say we've got two energy onto an unidentified fossil. If we can get a wishful baton on that just in case it does get knocked out because many things can just chip away and do 60 damage just in case it does get knocked out. We'll have the wishful baton on it and we can move those energy because we're playing these single prize attackers. Another great advantage here is that we have the counter energy. So this will help us, uh, kind of have a catch-up mechanism to get back into the match and we do have 10 fighting energy the reason i do 10 is i also like to use these as ultra ball fodder so i will ultra ball away maybe an energy and one other card just to be able to try and find the pieces that i need it felt a little bit more reliable than anything else that i've tested so far at this point so that's a little bit of how uh the deck uh functions here and next, let's just get into the matches. All right, let's call this coin flip here. I'm gonna call tails. Ah, uh, that kind of stinks that we lose the coin flip there. This isn't a bad start. If we can get a rare candy, it would be nice. We can get our fossil set up. We can start doing some chip damage with the buzz wall. We see a Trubbish and they're active, and then the Dawn Wings on their bench. They really just pass right away. Oof. That hurts. Yeah, they've got a heartbreak. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I feel bad. I'm sorry. That's not good. We will go ahead and attach here. Um, let's go ahead and... Let, ditch these two energy maybe we can get something off some poles with instruct okay not bad I'd like to get we'll save that for next turn try and get a rare candy maybe even a nest ball to get the knockout on the trubbish oh, oh. now it's carboder they're already going to be able to do 40 damage which isn't too threatening at this point we just got to be wary of how many items that we play so we probably won't play the order pad at this point we'll just go into tyrant and start getting our our tyrantrum set up now it's important to remember that if we have less Pokemon in play, our attacks do 60 more, and we take 30 less. They drop on the spell tag, that's a little bit annoying. could potentially discard this but it's another item that we're putting away and I really don't want to do that this is gonna it's gonna force him to really take a lot more time to uh, get the knockout here on us so we're just doing this little chip game back and forth here I don't know if he plays Blower, but we're going to wait at this point to play any more items until we can get this Garboder pretty much taken care of. So next turn he would be knocked out. 
except for the spell tag will also knock us out. Now we've got the Kranidos over here as well, which is nice. So it's starting to set up. It's slow, but it's steady at this point. Let's go ahead and attach this. Let's see if it will work when I'm getting knocked out. We'll go ahead and get one more pull from our deck with Instruct. We hit an Energy, which is nice. I think we might save that. We might want to save that. Uh, he's happy. Well played, huh? Uh-huh. He says, ooh, surprise. I wonder why he's so surprised. Okay. Hmm. I think we're going to go with getting this Tyrant set up because he's already... He's already, uh, he's already fully evolved. Now, do I get to move the energy with the Wish Baton? I might not get to because it was not from an attack. It was from an effect of the spell tag. So that hurts a little bit, but that's fine. We thin our hand at this point. doesn't really have any other attacker set up at this point, so, you know, we're good at this point. We're going to go ahead and bring him up. He'll, do, he'll take 30 less damage, but I'm thinking how much energy is in here. He might be able to get set up for a knockout, so I'm actually just going to bring up the, the Orin Guru. Let's see what we get off of the prize here. We get a Cynthia. That's, that's very good. That's a very good prize. I thought we were going to be kind of stuck there. So we're even on the price trade, so we can't use the Moon's Eclipse. And I don't want to use the Judge. I may want to order pad here. Let's just go for it. Not Tails anyways, okay. We'll go ahead and Cynthia. find another buzzwall which is valuable we'll go ahead and evolve into our rampardos maybe we can order hit on this order pad here nope double tails that hurts and we'll bench this down and that way we can instruct for one more card getting a lot of value out of this brain guru Double Ultra Ball, um, then we'll just wait. We've got Cynthia for next turn. We've still got less Pokemon than them. Now he is resistant to fighting. So instead of the 160 that we would be doing, we'd only be doing 140. They go ahead and refresh their hand with a Cynthia.
They're taking a little bit of time here to decide their next move. They play Mysterious Treasure. They discard a Naganadel for a Knit Arena. They could technically just invasion in for the knockout on the on the Oranguru. So let's go ahead and do a tech search here with this ultra space. We've got Diancy in here still. Rare candy. The Shrine of Punishment would really, really, really help us out in this matchup. We do get some choice bands in there. Counter energy is still a viable option as well. So we still got a lot of tools at our disposal. That is helpful. At this point, we just go ahead and get the wish baton on here just to be safe at this point. We'll just go ahead and play Cynthia. This is valuable here. We're going to get energy out of our discard and get it back into our deck. The game is being a little bit laggy right now. All right, there we go. And let's get an energy here. And we'll just pass at this point. We're both just playing a little bit reserved. He knows if he comes in and he knocks us out, it's going to activate the sledgehammer. It's not doing 120 damage. This Nether Queen is going to do a good amount of damage because they've got a good amount of evolution Pokemon. They got one, two, three now. So it will be doing. 160 damage. And the evasion win. here. I guess to get the most value out of him while he's here, I'm going to go ahead and promote him. Now we don't get energy off the top deck. We do have a Guzma. We've got a lot of different options here of what we can do. We can Ultra Ball for Diancy. We do have Pal Pads in the deck, I believe. So we could get the Judge back. But without the Orange Guru, I really am hesitant to play the Judge at this point. So let's go ahead and get rid of the Judge. We'll get rid of the Rare Candy. We don't really need that at this point. I'm going to go ahead and get the Diancy. This is going to give us a really good amount of value out of this attack. We will be able to do 180 damage, potentially. Um, 
and we get a shrine that helps us out tremendously we've got a, a unidentified fossil we can play down here fossil excavation map we can search our deck for a, a fossil reveal it or put a fossil card or discard pile into our hand we don't have any in the discard pile but we can go ahead and thin our deck and thin our hand basically by getting another fossil out because we do have a rare candy in our hand so we'll get that one on the bench and we'll put this down and we'll do a sledgehammer play at this point so 120 with the shrine tick damage it's 130 he will get a knockout here but I think that's fine at this point. Now we do have a full bench though, but we can just discard these and get rid of them to make this ability become active again. And we do have another excavation map in the deck that we saw when it did that deck search, so we know that we can potentially get them back. He can't Moon's Eclipse, so it's just up to him to get the knockout unless he has some sort of goosebump play that he wants to do. See a spell tag come down. Once again, that's going to be a little bit annoying. Puts the energy on the on the Knight of Queen. Goes ahead, does Queen's Calm, then his deck. He's just trying to get some Pokemon out of his deck, make it a little bit thinner, so he hits into the cards that he wants to have. So the ability does become active because we do have less Pokemon than our opponent at this point. The spell tag is going to be annoying because he's going to be able to put four damage counters wherever he wants. So even if we do get knocked out, we do have the Wish Baton. If not, we can still do 120 damage to this, this Nido Queen. So he's opting to hit our Fossil. So we do hit Rare Candy. We can get another Tyrantrum up. We may be able to Wishful Baton that all to this fresh one here. He doesn't get a prize card for this though. At least I don't believe, uh, don't quote me on that, maybe may be wrong. I'm not sure if they get a prize card because it's just a trainer card, even though it plays as a 60 HP basic. Exactly three prize cards remaining. This would do an extra 80 damage, do 160 damage. the Nido Queen instead. Mm -hmm. 
We will be able to do 160 damage to knock that out by doing rare candy and evolving up into him. So this is pretty good at this point. And we'll attach here. Well, actually at this point, I think it's more valuable to just keep him like that because you're gonna be playing evolution. I'm not really playing any basic Pokemon at this point. Hmm. As it's the Ultra Ball, this stuff away. I think I'm just gonna get rid of this. So that is two fossils in the discard. And my idea here is to do this and go ahead and put it from the discard into my hand. Just, just thinning these cards, basically. I'm going to Ultra Ball this stuff away and grab that other Oranguru. We know we got the Pal Pad in here. Okay, we got three Guzmas. We got three Draw Supporters left. Still got counter energy as well in case we get behind. Okay, we got the pal pad. Definitely want to get some Cynthia's back in the deck at this point. So there we go. We're doing 180 damage now. It's going to be hard for him to have anything come up that we can't knock out at this point. Technically, we have 130, uh, I'm sorry, 190 HP. which is going to be trouble for us. We have a lot of items in here. Just do a quick count. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, or 20, 140, 160, uh, 180, 200. Yeah, they're easily hitting over 200 damage. So that is a little bit scary. Hopefully we can get a Guzma. We can go ahead and get a knockout on it. be the ideal top deck card to say Guzma comes off at the top of the deck he's hitting 60 70 80 with the Diancie and then boom we knock out the Trubbish we don't really necessarily probably have to worry about seeing Garboder come out again and it is getting this really set up which makes me you know makes it seem like a lucrative target to get rid of all of that energy off of that benched Pokemon there I see Sightseer being played. So he's going to draw a couple cards here off of the Sightseer. He discarded a lot of Pokemon there. And he passes to us at this point. Interesting, uh, interesting move at this point. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of how many energy do we have in the discard? None at this point, I think. Oh no, we've got two. Hmm. Let's go ahead and get rid of the rare candy in the shrine, I guess, at this point. We still got another rare candy in the deck. Don't have any other fossils or anything. At this point, we're just sort of riding out what we've got here, right? Just gotta ride it out. And we're thinning our hand. Uh, hopefully we can hit like a Guzma. That would be ideal. I mean, I guess at this point, we just are going to have to attach an energy here. This will give us better value on this Instructor 3 now. 
We get to Tate and Liza. That's not necessarily what we want. Uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll play a choice band here. It's not necessarily really needed. And we'll shuffle our hand into our deck. What's his HP? 150. He's got how many evolved? One, two, three, potentially four. So we'll just keep him up because either way, they're Either one of them's gonna die, and I really want to find a Guzma. It's gonna come down to finding this. Okay, we've got the two Guzma. And we'll play this just to get this out of our deck as well, in case we get like a Marsh Shadow on us. So this is looking pretty good at this point. We pretty much got the game locked down. Actually, may have spoke a little bit too soon there. No, we've got the Guzma, so we will win. I'm sorry. We've got the Guzma play. There's that Garboder. They fail on the Nest Ball. Just doing the same thing that we're pretty much doing is thinning out cards that we don't need at this uh, at this far into the match. You know, we're pretty deep into this game. So we're really just trying to hit the cards that we need to win here. I think he's kind of playing from behind and I really don't see any way that he's gonna be able to pull this out. Cynthia's. So it's got 5, 10, 15, 20, 210 damage coming down. Rescue Stretcher. Now, did he play a Marsh Shadow earlier? No, he didn't. He just threw back in more evolution lines. So we should be good here. I was afraid that maybe he had one in the discard that he was going to use later in the game, that he was going to rescue stretch right out, drop it down on the bench, we'd lose our, our cards in our hand, and we'd have to hope that we hit the Guzma. But we're going to be fine here. So we've got game then at this point. Let my opponent know well played. They played a good match. And we just Uzma up this Malamar. there for us so we're really able to squeak out a win there it was it was very very evenly matched but we were able to just by playing our cards more strategically than than not necessarily more strategically than our opponent but we were able to play strategically enough to help our deck run well enough to be able to uh, you got a win there against a pretty good deck Perfect. 
Looks as if my opponent's playing Blacephalon. No basics here in our opening hand, so we are going to have to take a mulligan. That's a lot of Mulgans. Play down the Heat Factory. This lets them draw three cards if they discard a Fire Energy. They attach manually to the Poipol, and then they play a Cynthia. Then they pass for their turn. Two fossils down on the bench here. And energy on one of them. And at this point, we just have to pass. We see them evolve into the Naganadal. I play a Mysterious Treasure there. I've got another Naganadal set up on the bench now. So they're starting to get set up, starting to charge up some energy here out of their discard. We are going to see our Diancy go down. It's interesting they're trying to come with their single prize attackers in this matchup rather than use the uh, then use the Blacephalon. So we're going to go ahead and send that up. We do hit the Shrine of Punishment. That is nice. this and this. I was just thinking about what the best play is in this situation because kind of just has 90 HP it could survive an attack. Only got one other Tyrantrum in the deck. We got all of our rare candies, two more fossils. We do play counter energies, so something to keep in mind here because we are behind. 
Do I want to go with Oranguru to get some pulls potentially? We can put this energy right back into our hand. So I think we might just want to get this set up at this point. So we will be able to thin our hand entirely and get uh, full value out of that Oranguru by playing the energy down that we're about to get back. Okay. Go ahead and instruct for three. Okay, well, we do hit the buzz bolt. We're not gonna show them the buzz bolt at this time. And we could, no, we're not gonna bench anything else at this point. We're not gonna bench anything else at this point. We're just gonna pass. immediately bump our Shrine of Punishment. That is a little disheartening. They bench up Poipole. The thing that we need to watch out for is a Guzma. If they got a Guzma here, we pretty much lost this game at this point. So let's see what they do. Nope, they don't do that. So we're all right for right now. Now this is a really, really bold play here because if we, if we lose if we lose this fossil, this is putting everything on the line here. It's putting everything on the line. We're gonna just dump everything that we have in our hand at this point and just try and do everything we can to get what we need. So we do hit a rare candy, which is nice. We can go ahead and get this one evolved. We can also go ahead and attach this. I guess we'll go ahead and attach this here. He's He is weak to psychic. So it's a little disheartening. Um, we hit a Guzma. We could do a Guzma play where we get rid of this fossil to start swinging onto this Blacephalon and knock it out entirely. And I think that's the play that I want to make at this point. So we'll do this and then we will discard it from play. So we get rid of that. We bring up the Rampardos. We bring back out that fossil right from our discard and we get it right back. So it's not even like we lost it at this point. And then we'll put that back down on the bench. We'll go ahead and do Wild Crash. We get two prizes here. We get an order pad and a judge. Judge is really clutch right there because he has way too many cards in his hand. I do not like him having all of those cards. He is in Beast Ring territory, so he is able to potentially get some more energy accelerated out of his deck. This has to be all the energy that he has in the deck at this point. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten energy there. That's got to be everything. There's a Guzma play onto the fossil. Interesting. I don't think that's the right play, honestly. I don't think it is. Now he, because he does get to do more damage and it does shut down the buzz wall because he's gonna do 160, which is interesting. That is interesting. Now, what we need here to be really clutch is the Wishful Baton. No, we are not getting lucky with our order pad flips today. We get a Cynthia. 
I still would rather play this judge. I really want him to get rid of those cards that he has in his hand. We do get a Guzma, but that's not necessarily going to help us out. So sadly, losing that Diancy is what is going to swing this matchup for us. If we didn't have to start the Diancy, I think we would have been in a much better situation. But he is just going to go with the Guzma. I'm not sure really why he's going for that when he could have had the knockout. He could have potentially had the knockout on the Rampardos. So that does confuse me. I guess because he knows he's still going to have that play or so he thinks but by bringing this up we're going to knock that out and that's not going to be uh that's not going to be an option for him anymore he's only going to be doing 80 damage at this point and without a rescue stretcher that is something that i think we need to add to this list so as I play some of these matches, I realize in certain matchups and more often than not, uh, based on the occurrences, whether or not we need to add a card into the deck to try and tech to make sure that we have a more consistent probability of winning some of these matches. And I definitely think that Rescue Stretcher is going to be one of those things because we can get value by getting the Baby Buzzwool and by getting the Diancy back. Because 130... HP is very prevalent in the format at this point with the Nagonadal, with the uh, Giratina, and with uh, some of the other, some other ones. I can't, I can't think off the top of my head right now, but there, there are a few other ones. Now, I really, really, really want to get heads here, and that's going to be part of the doom, uh, gloom and doom that we're feeling here on this, because without the wishful baton, ah, uh, and there we go. We top deck the wishful baton. That is very clutch. I don't think that they're playing Field Blower in their list. I think we would have seen it by now. So I think we're safe to go ahead and do this. Uh, we can actually go ahead and just Ultra Ball weight both of these choice at this point. I have a feeling he doesn't want to play his Blacephalons, especially with him being out of so much energy at this point. We got two fossils left in the deck, but no way to get to those fossils at this point. So what we can do is go ahead and just get we probably want to get this out because it just does more damage faster. And it th we thin our deck by getting it out at least. Um, we can place order pad. Maybe we'll get the fossil. And wow, another tails. That is very, very, very disheartening. We get Cynthia. Uh, how many Guzma has my opponent played here? He's played two Guzma. Should possibly have at least one more Guzma. So we'll see what we do here. But I definitely want to have. Actually, no, we don't have to bring him in yet. We'll do clean hit. He will have a return knockout on us. But with Wishful Baton in play, I can move that energy here. And he won't be able to knock me out. Ultra Balls. Does he play Lele? He plays Tapu Lele. Uh, I don't think he would want to get a Tapu Lele in this situation. Okay, he grabs another Poiple. I don't know if he's just trying to thin his deck, or if he's he's going to start accelerating more energy out of his discard. Okay. And B string. No more energy in the deck. Okay. One, two. Okay. And he plays Lusamine. Wow. Met all damage. Ouch. That is painful to see because we are going to lose this game because of that. Now we did have many, many, many opportunities to sort of swing the matchup here, but it just didn't go in our favor. We got another Wishful Baton, so we can play this, play this. Maybe we can hit on a Guzma. How many Guzma have we played so far? We played two Guzma. Let's go ahead and instruct for one. And it's just another Cynthia. So we are going to lose this match, unfortunately, but we had some, we had some really bad luck here on 
our order pads. We could have got set up a little bit better if we didn't open with the Diane C and maybe would have been a little bit different of a matchup. I think we would have had a fair shot at being able to beat this deck. But that is sort of the way it goes. Now, we are not going to be knocked out here though. So we still are sort of in the game here. Could have probably moved this here, but you know, I was expecting uh, I was expecting to get a Guzma, but even a Guzma really would not have helped us. Lusamine just blocks completely for for him in this sort of situation. So a little bit of a misplay, but I felt I was just already out of the game at this point. They attach the beast energy. Yeah, they're going to get the knockout here by just going ahead and doing the burst GX and winning the game there. So unfortunately, we got a little bit behind with a, a slow start. Our opponent had a really fast start there. So unfortunate, but you do get to see a little bit of how the deck works against that matchup. That is a, a very meta deck and, uh, you know, we're relying on order pad. So it's a little bit iffy now and expanded. We could have got trainer's mail. would have been a little bit different in that matchup. Alright, on to this next matchup here. Not really sure what my opponent's playing here. I lose the coin flip. And this is a pretty good opening hand. This is probably one of the best opening hands that you could see for this deck here. So we'll get to play this out by attaching the energy here onto the buzz wall. We'll go ahead and we'll attach the choice band as well. Okay, I know this deck. Okay. This will be interesting. We'll definitely draw a card there. They're starting with their Mudkip. They're going to get that up into the Swamper to be able to get their draw support for every turn. So maybe their deck bricks and they don't hit the rare candy that they need and we will be able to knock it out, but they do play Pokemon Communication. So putting something back into the deck and they're getting a Tapu Lele here for this opening hand. Maybe they're going for Elm's Lecture to help them get set up. Okay, we see Elm's Lecture off of that Wonder Tag. And they play that. We see Vulpix, Mudkip, and Cosmog come down. So they've got a second Mudkip set up. So they're going to be pretty safe on getting their draw support. We get our Fossil onto the bench. And this is looking even better because we're just going to be able to Lily for more cards at this point. We won't play the choice band right now. We'll thin our hand by, by attaching the wishful baton. And we'll go ahead and Lily. And we do get Shrine of Punishment, which is nice. And we do get to do a little bit of chip damage here. So we got Ramperdos. This is going to be effective in this matchup because for just one energy, we're going to be able to do 120 damage before we add any damage modifiers like Choice Band or uh, Diancy. And they're going to play Power Draw. This lets them discard a card from their hand. If they do, they get to draw three cards. They're confident dumping that Choice Band because they know, hey, this is a single prize attacking deck is what it looks like. They refresh their hand with Cynthia. And then they pass for their turn. So they haven't really gotten set up at this point. So that is nice to see. We're going to attach the basic energy at this point. And I feel confident just sort of 
waiting this turn out because we are going to get a prize card here. we get another counter energy so that's that's nice as well that chip damage is starting to build up on that tapu lele but this is where they're really going to get set up and started because they're going to start being able to beacon actually elms lecture again for a ralts and a prism star ditto Maybe we'll get a judge here. A judge would be the ideal thing to kind of stop them at this point. So we don't hit on the judge. So we're just gonna go ahead. We're gonna play this choice band down and we'll just change our hand up here with Cynthia. We get another fossil, which is nice. And we'll start getting some energy on this one as well. We can try and go for an order pad here. That is disappointing. But that is fine, because I feel like we're we're slowly getting to where we need to be. Our hand will be dead drawing, which is unfortunate. Because we were sitting on two Cynthia's. And we play one Cynthia. And now we don't hit into another draw supporter. They play an energy lotto, looking for a special energy there. They get the double colorless. They put that down onto their Curlia. And they just evolved this up into the Alola Nine Tails. They're going to be able to do this uh, mysterious guidance. And they're going to be able to find two item cards. And they rare candy. They rare candy the Cosmog into the Sogaleo GX that has the Shining Mane. So they have no weakness. And this attack does 120. You get to attach two basic energy cards from the discard pile to one of their benched. And they also have this uh, Prominence GX where they get to heal everything. So they're going to actually take out this fossil, which... It's a little bit upsetting. That is a little bit upsetting, but we do have this guy to come in and start swinging on them. Now, unbeknownst to them, they don't realize that that Brooklyn Hill really does help us out here. We're getting this Diancy Prism Star out. I'm actually just going to add another energy here to the Buzzwall, and we'll do clean hit. It does 170 damage, so that's nothing to uh, nothing to snuff about there, I guess. Ooh, the max potion though. I should have seen that coming because they have the max potion in their uh, Mysterious Guidance, but we had to swing into it regardless. I play another Pokemon Communication. Their deck is getting quite thin now. They're down to only 20 cards left in their deck. Up the Cynthia, now they're down to 18 cards. Another Pokemon communication. And they get a Marsh Stomp. We'll 
grab a, another buzz wall. Now let's go ahead and attach a counter energy to him. Now if they max potion again, that's going to be very, very annoying. Gosh, this is getting quite annoying here. energy from my discard pile here into my hand. Ah, the game is freezing up. There we go. And we will just go ahead and attach it here. And then we will just sledgehammer. Now I think we may have finally possibly ran them out of resources at this point. The two max potions, those are gone. But they do play the Guzma. They're going to knock out our fossil. Honestly, it's very, very annoying. Which we don't have a hand and that will help us out here go ahead and play the order pad I actually do finally hit our heads here on the order pad so we're actually gonna go and get the fossil excavation map we get a fossil out of our discard here Put the energy down there and we'll just go ahead and let's see sledgehammer is going to do 140 so we'll just go ahead and get the guaranteed 140 there oh i'm sorry uh we're past the sledgehammer turn so it's only actually doing uh 50 damage that's fine at this point i had a feeling they were going to retreat that way they can get those two energy right back Oh, they actually go ahead and do the prominence to just heal everything at this point. Uh, interesting strategy, I guess, at this point. I should have done the swing around, but regardless with what happened last turn, that doesn't really matter at this point. Two tails, that does hurt. But 100 damage plus 10 from the shrine. It does help. 
That does help. Let's see how long we can hang in this game. They're gonna get knocked. We're gonna get knocked out. This uh, baton's gonna help us move this energy here. We just really need to hit our rare candies. And I think we would be in a pretty good situation if we could hit our rare candies. So we've got to go for the gusto here. We've got to bring up... We've got to bring up this fossil. We do hit... We do hit the rare candy, which is very, very nice. So let's go ahead and attach another one here. We're going to have to Cynthia. Our, our deck's getting low, so maybe we'll get lucky here and we'll hit into the cards that we need again. And we do, which is very nice. Now, we we'll probably want to go with this Tyrantrum again. And we've got this Oranguru. How many energy do we have in our discard pile here? We've got just one. I'm debating just going ahead and thinning these cards from our hand at this point. We can't really do anything else. I think we'll just wait here. We're going to get some prizes. So let's go ahead and just do this. Now, if they're smart, they'll know not to bench another Pokemon. So they should have a knockout here, right? 30, 60, 30, 60, 90, 120, 30, 60, 90. Okay. They hit for 180 damage. They really, really needed a choice ban here. Just kind of mulling over my options here. Let me take a second. I mean, we could do Guzman Play to where we knock out this Tapu Lele, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to get just get knocked out next turn. Now we're going to be doing 160, 180 damage. 180, that is a knockout at this point. Let's just go ahead and get. Uh, we get that set up there. They, they've already used their GX, so they can't just go ahead and use the GX and knock us out with that. So I think we're going to be all right at this point. Just go ahead and take the knockout. And we will discard this. It doesn't really matter because with the shrine damage ticking, we'll get the knockout. We may just be able to pull this one out here. We may just be able to scrape out a win here against them. Because we do have the Guzman hand, and all we need to do is knock out this Swamper. Or actually, just probably knock out this Lele, since it's already damaged at this point. We've only got five cards left in their deck. We've got quite an arsenal of cards there in their hand. drawing again. Okay. Not sure if they were trying to get this going. And I 
guess at this point we just drop them a well played because we did uh, go ahead and finally hit all of our Guzmas here right at the end of the game. It's a little disheartening, but we see the victory screen there. They, they concede. They know that we've got the win there. So that was really uh, an amazing showcase of, of how uh, this deck is very valuable. It does take a lot of people by surprise. It's got a different varied option with the uh, with the clean hit ability. You can instantly wipe off a basic where you can do 120 damage for one energy to an evolution Pokemon. The Tyrantrum gave a lot of uh, a lot of value by having by having them think twice about how many Pokemon that they can bench. So uh, hang in the matches. Don't just give up early because it looks like you're going to lose. Uh, play it out. There's a clear example of why you need to stay stay in the game. Keep your head in the game. Don't get tilted. Don't get defeated over some of these matches. Uh, excellent showcase of the video here. I hope you guys appreciate everything that we uh, that we're doing here on the channel to show off some of these decks. This is sort of a little bit of a rogue deck, but appreciate all you guys watching the video. Don't forget to leave a leave a comment if if you've got any thoughts or opinions on the deck, and uh, leave a like and go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. Thanks thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good day.